Let's set the stage for the next set of videos and we want to talk about data which in Python comes in the form of objects. We want to talk about the data's type and literals. Now we need to explain what each of these terms means to us. First, when it comes to data, let's use the singular form of the noun. So datum, a piece of data, is information that's stored in the computer in the form of an object. So an object is a technical term in computer science and we'll talk about that in just a second but when it comes to information we mean something such as a string of text. That's one piece of information or a number. An integer number can be a datum or piece of information and there are other forms of data but we'll leave it at that for now. So what do we mean by an object? Python represents everything as an object and an object is a collection of things. It has an ID, it has a type, and it has a value. To make this more concrete, let's use as an example something we've done several times before. Let's print hello world. So in this case we're calling the print function and passing to it a bit of information, an object, and specifically a string object. Now let's write this all out. The text hello world enclosed in quotes is a string object and we said an object has an ID, a type, and a value. For this particular string the value is the collection of characters hello world without the quotation marks. The quotation marks delimit the string but they're not part of the value. The type of this object is probably what you guess. It's a string type object and you'll see Python refer to this as just str for string. Now we said the third thing that objects have is an ID and an ID is something we don't worry about. So this is something that Python internally will keep track of for us. It needs it for bookkeeping purposes, but we really don't care about that ID. So it's just mentioned here for the sake of completeness. We do care about the value of objects, and quite often we need to pay attention to type, but ID, eh, we could forget about it. Now, how does data get into our programs? Well, data can be entered into a program in various ways and let's list some of them. We might prompt the user to enter the data so it can be entered by the user and we'll see how to do that later. We might instead write a program to read data from a file. Alternatively we could write a program where the data is created by the program itself. For example, it performs some calculation based on other information it has and creates an object, creates some data. Finally, the data can be entered directly into the code by the programmer. So the data is hardwired into the code itself. So we want to expand upon this last form of entry and data written into the code by the programmer are known as literals. We can have literal strings, literal numbers, and here are some examples. Let's try printing the string 42. 
So it's some text enclosed in quotes. We hit return and we get 42. We could print the number and now this is a different type of object and we'll talk about that in a later video. This is a integer value. When we hit return, print will print that number. We can have print 42.0 and this is numeric data again but it's a different type of number. This is a real number. The previous number was a integer number and before that we had a string but the string, the integer value 42, the real number 42, those are all literal data, forms of data that are written directly into our code. So we'll explore that in the next few videos.